COVID has reshaped our relationship with work in so many ways. And for people suffering from long COVID, career paths have been dramatically derailed, according to a new article in the journal. Um, as, uh, uh, economists estimate that long COVID has pushed about 1 million Americans out of the labor force. More than 5% of adults in the U.S. have long COVID and is the most prevalent among people in their prime working years. The federal government has said long COVID can be classified as a disability, allowing workers to seek accommodations like remote work and flexible hours. Jeff, talk a little bit about it, because it's back. COVID's back. I went to the Democrat National convention has gotten COVID. I still have not gotten COVID, which is astonishing. Yeah, it's amazing. I know. I'm a unicorn. Um, but talk a little yeah. bit about what's happening on the ground now and then long COVID in, in specifics. And then George, as someone who's experienced long COVID, I'd love to hear from you. Go ahead. So so first, let me just briefly talk about the vaccine is available soon. Um, it's the, um, the, the new vaccine covers the most common variant right now. It's the Omicron uh, KP uh, two one. That's the vaccine. That's the variant that the vaccine now covers, which is going to cover the most common forms of COVID. The most common, thirty seven percent of COVID cases are uh, KP three one one, and um, you know, the, like the influenza virus, the COVID virus changes its uh, surface proteins. It's called the spike proteins, and so you need to be updated on the vaccine. Uh, vaccines give you about four months of durable uh, immunity. That's why it's important to get your boosters as well. But uh, everybody <clears throat> six months or older should get uh, this new vaccine. Um, and the issue of long COVID is really important. They estimate that 30% of people have some form of long COVID symptoms who've had COVID. And about 1% to 5% of people have serious long-term COVID symptoms. Um, and I think a lot of it goes unrecognized as uh, just depression, fatigue, anxiety, but these are all possibly um, elements of long COVID, and it affects literally every body system. Every organ system is affected by long COVID. It's your neurologic system, it's your kidneys, it's your liver, it's your skin, it's your joints, all these things. Um, and it's a real thing. I, I have, I can, I can, off the top of my head, I have two colleagues who I really respect and admire. One is a surgeon and one is a nurse that I work with who have basically uh, been un, unable to work. One retired, they basically just... Uh, felt that uh, he couldn't continue uh, feeling the way he was feeling. Brain fog is a really important element of long COVID. Um, and, uh, you know, fortunately for him, he's got so many hobbies and interests. And, he, you know, he's my age. And so it's, you know, maybe it was and, time and to think about retiring. people didn't take it seriously, correct, George? I mean, this is something you, you had. Uh, I have several friends uh, uh, who have it, who've written about it, Jen Senior, Laura Holson, um, and very severe. And a lot of people, they still suffer from people not believing them in some, like it, it, the same thing with Lyme disease or uh, some of the other um, diseases in this genre of I'm tired, right, essentially. Uh, talk a little bit about your experience. Oh, Jeff, you just brought me back to <clears throat> some of the things that I were fe was feeling at the time, neurological. I couldn't go out in certain public, I would start to have an, like a nervous system breakdown uh, on a subway or in a theater. That's where I had my first panic attack. And this was, this had never, I had no history of this whatsoever. And then the feeling that I'm having a heart attack. I couldn't be around other people, which just sort of added, to, uh, crowds of people, I should say, which just sort of added to uh, the loneliness, isolation aspect, which is part of this, um, you know, long COVID effect. Go, what happened? How did it progress? I, the heart attack feeling, the uh, panic feeling, the neurological, all of that stuff, and the fatigue, there was brain fog, and eventually, we're going back two years, and eventually just kind of um, over time. When I went to the COVID care center at Mount Sinai, the doctor with whom I spoke believed me, and as I gave her my litany of symptoms, nodded her head, she was the first one, she kind of nodded her head, and she said, we're seeing a ton of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it makes you feel less lonely in your experience, let that be a comfort, which it was. And she said, the bad news is that there is nothing you can do. You just kind of have to ride it out. And that was a pain in the ass. But eventually, she was right. She said it could be six months, could be a year. It was out a year out before I started to feel sort of normal. When you're in uh, medical school, one of the things you learn uh, to differentiate and understand the difference between signs and symptoms, right? So symptoms are things like that you're feeling, like fatigue, uh, my muscles hurt. You know, these are more of the subjective things. There are actually signs of, of as well, and signs are things like fever, 
you know, elevated heart rate, um, uh, ele you know, laboratory studies, elevation, sedimentation rate uh, in your blood, et cetera. And more and more as people are studying this, they're really understanding that uh, long COVID has sign both signs and symptoms. And so doctors are more astute now about looking for mm -hmm. those signs because they're objective as well as the subject of sensations and believing people when they say exactly what I, you're I could not have worked in an office. I, I, was, right. I had the good fortune of doing whatever I do to make a living from home or wherever, but working in an office would have been a problem. So when should people take these? Uh, Louis, I'm just curious. I, 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 you're, you are going to get your COVID-19 vaccine, I hope, um, but you're an adult. Um, how do younger people, I don't think younger people are thinking about this. It's sort of like a flu vac vaccine or whatever. Um, the CDC will recommend that adults and children six months and older get updated vaccines. Um, are you? How do you look at it? Well, I mean, I think for a lot of people my age, um, and maybe more people in general. Uh, we every once in a while we get a little bit of a cold or a cough or something like that, and we're all like, "Oh, oh wait, could it be the old friend? You know, is, is are they back?" Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely, um, especially people with someone important in their lives or some kind of purpose. Um, if they go to work, if they have a, they live with their grandparents, or they have people within their network that are more susceptible. I think people who care care, and people who don't don't. Um, so I'm definitely a bit behind. I probably may definitely do for a new vaccine so yeah you, you don't have that. to for a while. i actually you know what maybe even to answer your question even better i didn't even know there was a new vaccine till just now so okay <laughs> maybe okay. maybe See, that's an answer in itself <laughs> yeah this is the... well they need to they roll do. out yeah. that information thing yeah. people ignore covid yeah. at their like, own like risk Ryan Reynolds i mean it is a campaign a... or something like that a nice like that's who he would convince you to grab yeah. All our yeah. Attention. yeah when should you take it jeff i've been told by my doctors that you should take it later in this later in september not to wait and then again the booster again and the flu vaccine again in january february yes so, so a couple things. You can take multi, you can take several vaccines at the same time. There's no contraindication to getting the flu vaccine and the COVID vaccine at the same time. Um, the um, you, if you've had COVID in the last three months, uh, don't get the vaccine until about three months have expired. And not that it's dangerous to get it. The thing is that the actual fact of having COVID is going to give you immunity. So you want to, it's like putting gas in your car after you went, you know, like one, one exit. There's no point in doing that. Wait till your gas tank is low and then fill it up again with your vaccine. Um, so it, you should get it. I mean, the, the, there's a spike in the winter of COVID and it's for several reasons. One is temperature uh, and the other is that people are, tend to be inside more and it's more transmissible, you know, between people. So you, you should get it as soon as it's available, provided that you haven't had COVID in the last three months.